Hello, and welcome to this very special edition of The Debate. Today we're joined by candidates for the Salford and Eccles constituency in the upcoming general election. Today we'll be asking a deceptively simple question. Whose responsibility is the climate? Today's question is a burning one. Is the United Kingdom facing a democratic crisis? And here to guide us through this political minefield are Sir Graham Brady, the Salford-born Conservative who first became an MP in 1997, going on to chair the 1922 committee, Claire Fox, Brexit Party MEP and founder of the Ac Academy of Ideas think tank, and John Leach, former Liberal Democrat MP and current leader of the opposition on Manchester City Council. We have Rebecca Long-Bailey from the Labour Party, the Conservative candidate Atika Chowdhury, Brian Bleers of the Green Party, Jake Overend of the Lib Dems, and Matt Mickler representing the Brexit Party. I'm joined today by Gina Dowding, who was, up until last Friday, a Green MEP for the North West, and Joel Stone, representing Extinction Rebellion. Despite the fact that some people are passionate about whether we're in or out of the EU, a lot of people are a bit like, oh, I don't know, do I? So the, 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 the powers that be, because I was actually at some of the discussions on this, said things like, we've got to really get people motivated. So they said, we're going to tell people it's the most important vote of a lifetime. Mm. We're going to really mobilise people, look them in the eye and say they have got the decision. And in a way, it was the first time people felt their vote might count. Direct democracy has has basically thrown a hand grenade into the whole issue of Europe. And what we've said we'll do, after three years of shambolic drama in Parliament that's been led by the Conservative government, is that we'll negotiate that deal within three months, we will put it to a public vote within six months so that people will decide whether they're happy with that deal, was it what they voted for, and it will be put alongside Remain, so it will be a people's vote to decide the outcome and we'll respect Excellent. the result of that vote. The Brexit deal is the only deal that's on the table and nobody has any idea about what else is going on. We've put it on the table and we said this is what we want, this is what the businesses need, um, and with, with the EU the free trade ne negotiations are important. Even if it was called cynically, by David Cameron because he wanted to resolve the issue of the EU within the Tory party and feeling as though UKIP, which was an insurgent I think it was party. way more cynical than that. I think, well, it, was, I think it was about the, the, the perceived threat of UKIP. And that is, if the Conservative Party comes back in this election with a majority, that is essentially the deal which is on the table and which will be implemented and we will end up, albeit about five years too late, uh, we will end up with exactly the kind of proposition that the Leave campaign was, was putting forward at that time. But there's so, absolutely no guarantee of that though, is there? Because the, one, once, once the withdrawal agreement is, a, is a, if it's ever agreed by Parliament, that is just the beginning of the process, of not is. the end. And, and when, when politicians talk about getting Brexit done, it's a complete nonsense. It's actually getting Brexit started. Well, it's, um, it's getting to the point where we have actually left the EU legally, gone into a transition arrangement that allows all those sharp edges to be smoothed out and gives a period of time or in which, in or which could to negotiate. In no deal. In which, but, it, but it's not going to result <laughs> but, in but no it deal. Could. One of the very odd things about the 2017 election mm -hmm. is that even though cards on the table, the Conservative Party fought the uh, worst general election campaign, not just in British history, but since the Greeks invented democracy, uh, is, <laughs> that, um, it is that in spite of that, uh, we increased our vote by two and a half million. We've got to get people using public transport, but the public transport networks, after years of underinvestment in Salford, are absolutely shocking. You can't get from one side of the city sometimes on a bus. You get into Manchester, but if you want to get across Salford, you're going to be stuck. The council has recently declared a climate emergency and is proposing to build thousands of new homes around Salford as part of the Greater Manchester Spatial Framework, whilst at the same time telling the public we need clean air zones. What are your opinions on this and what would your party do to address and balance the need for new homes with the equally, if not more important, need to protect the planet and prevent further climate change? And in my view, Labour has let Salford down on this and Greater Manchester. I was in the room in 2017 when Andy Burnham said that Greenbelt would only be considered for council housing um, and what we've seen in, in fact is deallocation of Greenbelt in Earlham, in Worsley and other parts of Salford for housing of which a percentage will be council or affordable housing. The definition of affordability is a massive problem. It is based on house prices rather than on wages so in fact many of these properties that are classed as affordable aren't at all. And um, as Matt said, they said that these are the wrong types of houses being built in the wrong places. When we're talking about individual responsibility, there's a whole, way, whole range of things that we can do as individuals 
but I, from a political point of view, which is where I decided to sort of, um, yeah, put my energy, mm -hmm. is I feel as though basically it's about systems change. So individual responsibility important, but ultimately, for me, it's about systems change. So social responsibility yeah, to social, act and influence. Exactly, yeah. The people who were arguing that we should remain in the European Union, led by George Osborne, Cameron and everybody else, told us what the consequence of voting leave would be, and they actually described what I would now call a clean break Brexit. They were doing it to frighten us, because they said, we'll tear up every international treaty, we won't have any, and, and people said, oh yeah, thank you, that voting well, to leave. I agree with Atika as far as that Labour has, has, has not done enough and it has led some of these problems that we've, we've faced in Salford, but it is under national legislation under her government that means that developers are allowed to challenge these developments on the basis of affordability, and it is also on the basis mm. of, of her government that, that many of these things are happening. So we need legislatory changes that the Conservatives introduced and they are driving some of that as well, so I don't, I don't agree. We have money, a pot of money, Section 106, which we can use if we want to build something, do something, we can do that. There's a housing development, there's housing associations actually. There are, most of the homes are being built by done by housing associations. They're private, private associations. That's nothing to do with the, the government, that is, that is to do with the associations yep. yeah, themselves. Another point of information over on the right from Rebecca Ronald um, I think housing associations Used to, they didn't exist many, many years ago when the Labour government was in power and we were building more council homes. And over the years, the Conservative governments have gradually eroded the powers that housing associations have and the funding that they have. So they're now in a position where to self-fund, they have to build private homes to keep themselves ticking over. And that's not acceptable. Okay, furiously taking down notes, so let's see what she's got I know, I just wanted to come back with a bit of a dose of reality, really, on the vocational point that Atika made. There's been 3.3 billion cut from further education and skills since 2010. The apprenticeship system is not fit for purpose. You've got many people doing apprenticeships who <coughs> don't get offered a full-time job at the end and they're not real apprenticeships, they're just being used and exploited. You've got commercialised um, a commercialised situation point. happening in the university sector where universities now are operating like businesses, they're offering the most popular mm -hmm. courses instead of the ones that industry needs. Okay. We need a skill system that works yeah. for industry, and at the moment we don't have that, and can that's I, what we're going sorry. to address. Can, can I just moment. remind, can very, I just remind quickly, the Labour Party, yes, 168 yes. billion pounds we were in, left in deficit by the Labour government. We had to make certain cuts to restore that. Now we're working in the economy to make it better come all, come all these years down the line. It a takes time, and we are doing that. This is why we are bringing in more funding and bringing in, making sure that education is key for every child, that every child has an equal education, whether you come from a poor background or whether you're from a rich background. Excellent. I'll give Rebecca a very, very quick rebuttal there. Atika, we'll as Atika knows, uh, we suffered a world banking crisis, but it's interesting that her Chancellor was at Deutsche Bank handing out derivatives at the very same time, and I wonder if she has a view on that. Vice right Chancellor? Well, I don't know what the Chancellor was doing at the time, but all I can say is that you left us in debt. We have to clear that mess up after all those years. But it wasn't a world uh, banking crisis. Well, it wasn't just Did a that bank not happen? It was a deficit, £168 billion, which you left with us, that we have to clear up. <laughs> if we, start, if we get stuck years. talking about the past, we may get mm. stuck here forever. Mm. But, it, um, but the past we is will just hear from as Matt important. Because he did have an objection earlier, and I want to keep it equal. So I we'll want to hear from Matt quickly. Thanks for joining us, and see you next time.